Okay, students, we're going to try this. Um, here is the epoxy, okay, two-part epoxy. Uh, you have to mix equal parts, exactly equal for it to harden. So we bought uh, graduated cups there so we could tell when they're perfectly uh, the same amounts. Um, we mix those, we add our color, we pour into our uh, router um, CNC router plaque. So I've got two to do here, a lion and a bulldog. You can see uh, some of my old pores, what was left over, all translucent and then some opaque ones. And we've got uh, our, uh, what do I call this glitter? Um, no, uh, metal flake, that's what we're calling it. That's right. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, uh, pour those, let them set overnight, and then let them harden, and then over, uh, you know, it'll become rock hard like this one. We'll sand this one as well, and uh, show you how we get it to be where it looks like an inlay. Um, we have our two lasers. So, laser burns the wood, okay, burns your graphics into the wood, where the CNC router cuts your graphics into the wood then um, you don't have to fill it with epoxy. That's just an option for us, okay? So if you want to do that, we certainly can. Let's see if I can uh, get this on here. That looks like it'll uh, uh, be fine. Okay, let me finish my taping. As you can see, I didn't finish that. I wanted to show you that process here real quick. So I got one more piece of tape to put on. I'm trying to save time here. All right, and I'm gonna put it in about right there. Push down the outside, bring up the inside so it creates a seal where it can't leak out. Remember, it's like water, so this tape has to be pushed down very well where it runs off the board and makes a terrible mess. Okay, so I've got my two uh, pours here three ounces each um, I've got a stir stick I am going to pour this one it's got a drop or two more I'm going to pour it into this one okay I've got to get every speck every drop out of here then I've got to stir it for a couple minutes okay it doesn't start the chemical process until they are mixed Okay, so I could, I could have that epoxy, which I have since last year, and it doesn't harden because it's a two-part epoxy. It's a chemical reaction that uh, takes place. It actually creates some heat when the two parts mix. You can feel the cup getting a little hot. Matter of fact, I've even had it melt the cup um, when we uh, stirred it too much got that process going a little too quickly. So I want to get as much of it out of here as I can get out. Otherwise, they're not equal, right? If they're not equal, it may not harden. When it doesn't harden, guess what? We get to start the project over because it's a gooey, sticky mess. You can't get it out of, off of your plaque. We don't fail very often. Usually when we're in a rush, that's... Uh, that's when it happens. So I am using the edge of my stick as a scraper for my cup, getting all of it out of there that I possibly can. That ought to be enough. And now that that's trash. So I'm gonna stir this one. It's gotta be stirred thoroughly, very thoroughly. You cannot stir it too much. You could go too long but you can't get it uh, to uh, the two parts uh, stirred too much as, as far as mixing goes. You want it thoroughly mixed. You don't want to stir it real fast because then you're introducing bubbles and we don't want bubbles in our epoxy. If we did get bubbles, um, we could use a heat gun, kind of like a hair dryer. It looks just like a hair dryer and we could uh, get the bubbles out of it that way, okay? So I'm stirring this. I forgot to start my timer, so I'm gonna to have to guesstimate. We'll make sure we've got at least two minutes. 
Once we're uh, at two minutes, wish you guys were here timing me, um, then we're gonna pour it into a third cup that helps us stir it. When I first bought this stuff, it came from California. We ruined project after project after project. So I would pour more hardener in. That didn't help. So I called the company and they told me, yeah, it's gotta be a precise uh, process where you are adding exactly equal amounts and then it's got to be thoroughly mixed. So they recommended mixing it in a cup like this, starting out with equal cups so for equal product, putting it into one cup, stirring it, and then we'll take it from this cup into the next cup. And we'll stir that for a minute. We'll add our color. And then we're ready to put the pour. Okay. You guys are timing me at home, right? I'm going to say that's enough. I wish I had you live so you could tell me. All right, so now we're going into this cup. Brand new cup. So this one will be toast again. Getting all of it out of here again with this stick. It's a precise process. When we do it this way, and we do a good job of timing it and uh, measuring it, all of those things, it, uh, it hardens well for us. We've had very little failure. So I'm getting as much out of here as I can. Swipe it and scrape it. Swipe it on the cup, scrape it on the new cup. Got to get it all out of there. So this is where it really feels like an art class to me. I was telling you guys our, this is art and wood and epoxy are our mediums. You guys could actually take an art project, um, a picture of maybe a drawing and we could we could burn it into uh, our project with the laser. So we can also uh, do text, right? From our keyboard, we could type in the text and size it, and we could burn it into the, the project so we could put messages on it, and or we could cut it in the uh, CNC router, cut the text out and uh, go with a epoxy or, or leave it not epoxied. All right, so I've got that pretty well done. I pitch the old stick and the old cup. I go with the new stick. Guess what? We stir again. <laughs> I told you it has to be thorough or it will ruin the project. It won't harden. It'll be a gooey mess. Almost uh, the consistency of honey, okay? and you can't get it off your board. It's just um, what happens is if we think maybe it's hard enough, maybe we'll give it a week to dry. We try to sand it in our sander and it gums up the sanding belt. Those belts are $80 each and it ruins the belt. So yeah, it's not worth even trying if it's not rock hard. So I am going back and forth. I am stirring the edge and the bottom with this stir stick, making sure that I have got this thing stirred as humanly possible. If I'd have been thinking I'd have had my timer on, I think it's better to over stir rather than to under stir. So. We will see. You'll know what happened if it doesn't harden. I messed up on my time. <laughs> All right. As this uh, epoxy gets older, it does yellow a little bit. Um, so it might be better for a, uh, a opaque color than translucent, but I'm gonna try the translucent. Let's see what we come up with. All right, so there it is. Now this is enough for both of them. They recommend not going over six ounces because uh, people you know, have more failure if you get too much. 
So I'm going to go with three ounces each. So I'm going to pour three ounces of this into another cup. I can add my colors. A little bit more. All right, we're going to see if that works. So there's my two epoxies. The bulldog is going to be red. So I'm going to, this is concentrated color. Shouldn't take more than a few drops. That should be plenty. Got some on my fingers. Messy. I'm not bleeding, I promise. I'm going to go yellow for our tiger. That yellow is pretty light color, so I went quite a bit more. Now I've got stir sticks for those. Got to stir it, right? And you see it changing color. I'm going to try our metal flake a couple different ways. On this one, I'm going to put the metal flake in. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> that poured out really fast. Wow. On the other one, I'm going to put it on top. And we'll see what difference it makes. Sometimes if it's a heavy metal flake, it sinks to the bottom. And you can't see it as well. But we'll see. This is trans, uh, uh, translucent colors, so we should be able to see it. Okay. So I've got that one mixed pretty well. Let's mix our yellow. I was also going to put a little of the red around the tiger eyes. Okay, I thought that might look 